This is the Macintosh SE from 1987, the third computer in Apple's Macintosh lineup. This machine is equipped with an 8 MHz Motorola 68000, 1 MB of RAM, and a 20 MB SCSI hard disk. Although you can get revisions of this computer all the way up to 4 MB of RAM with a 40 MB SCSI hard disk. There is also a version of the Macintosh SE available with two floppy drives. This system also shipped with then new macOS 4.0 and can be upgraded to a maximum of macOS 7.5. Although you can only upgrade to macOS 7 if you opted for the version with 4 megabytes of RAM and a hard disk. This computer I found at the thrift store for $7, and I didn't even test it. So I thought I would take the gamble and see if I could resurrect this Macintosh SE. This thing is actually in really good condition. It just seems a bit dirty. Honestly, I have seen these systems in much worse condition. But before anything else, brief history on the Macintosh SE. A lot of people think that the SE in Macintosh SE stands for second edition, but it actually doesn't. What the SE stands for in this case is system expansion. This made it easier for people to add upgrades to their computer. You could even add ports to your computer that weren't there before, like network cards or video adapters via the expansion port on the back of the computer. And that would plug into a new expansion slot on the motherboard. This expansion slot was also used to add something known as the accelerator card. The Macintosh SC was really marketed towards business, which was really evident in its pricing. The base model of the Macintosh SC with dual floppy drives was priced at $2,900. Adjusted for inflation, that is $7,800 in today's money. And if you wanted the version with the 20 megabyte SCSI hard disk, that would be an additional $1,000, which is equivalent to over $10,000 in today's money. Also, this was the first Mac to use ADB, or Apple Desktop Bus. Apple Desktop Bus was a proprietary connector used by Apple to use with their mice, keyboards, and other peripherals. But really quickly, before we do anything else, we must do what's called a smoke test. I have never powered this thing on, so let's see if it works. Yeah, honestly, I was kind of expecting that. This poor thing seems to not want to boot from the hard drive at all. And during the boot, I didn't even hear the hard drive spin up. So I guess we should probably take a look inside and see what's going on in there. And upon looking inside, I could instantly tell this thing has been messed with. There are supposed to be four screws holding the case together, but instead there was only two. And the best part about that, the screws weren't even matching. Also, I was looking around inside and I can instantly see why the hard drive is not spinning up. It appears that the Molex connector fell off of the analog board. And it looks like somebody tried to hold it back in place with hot glue. So we're gonna have to resolder this. But I'll save that for later. Let's take off the motherboard and disk drives. While I was taking this apart, I discovered there's actually a big piece missing from this. On the bottom of the motherboard, there's supposed to be a shield that separates the back of the motherboard to the bottom of the case. But that seems to be straight up missing. I mean, it doesn't seem to be hurting anything, but it's interesting that that's just completely gone. Also, it looks like the speaker wire wasn't plugged in. So that would explain why we did not hear a startup chime. I removed the motherboard and it actually looked quite nice. It just seemed a bit dusty, so I went ahead and dusted it off. But also while I was inspecting the board, I noticed that there was this one resistor that was cut on one end. These resistors act as a jumper for the memory, so this system's RAM must have been upgraded. And now for the disk drives. The hard drive, well, I mean, it's fine, just dusted it off a little bit, but I wanted to really make sure that the floppy drive would be okay, because these older floppy drives that are in these Macs don't really seem to do very well when it's sitting in storage or transported, so I wanted to make sure that it's all clean and ready to go. Okay, now it's time to properly address the elephant in the room, the analog board. More specifically, the Molex connector. I have to take this entire thing apart to get the analog board out, so then I can re-solder the connection on the board. I'm not gonna add any new solder. My plan was just to warm up the pre-existing solder and try to just melt it back into place. Partly because I don't have any extra solder on hand right now, and I wasn't gonna buy more solder for this video. And it doesn't help that I'm not very confident in my soldering ability. But eh, fuck it, we need to get it fixed, so I might as well just give this a try. And honestly, the results weren't actually as bad as I thought. The joints don't actually look bad at all. Also, it looks like there's a hole here and here, but it's not actually a hole. I actually don't really know what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's just a burn mark or something. And I went ahead and applied some fresh hot glue to the top just to really ensure that thing does not fall out again. And now with that being hopefully fixed, we can reassemble this thing. Put the analog board back in, put the motherboard back in, put the drives in, connect everything up, put the cover back on, and then we're good to go. But before we turn on the computer, I want to clean this thing off. The stuff that was on here was actually really tough to get off. I'm not really sure what it was, but I did eventually get it off, and now this thing looks really nice. Now for the moment of truth. Will it boot to the hard drive? No fucking way.
it actually worked the first time and it booted directly to the hard drive. I really was not expecting that to work the first time. So now that we have a functioning Mac, we need to get some peripherals because I currently do not own an Apple ADB mouse or keyboard. So it's time to look on eBay to find a mouse and keyboard. Uh, you know what? This actually looks good. I mean, it's untested, but uh, I suppose we can give it a try. Buy it now. The first thing I did was check the about system screen to see what version of macOS and how much RAM was in the system. And it says here that we have 4 megs of RAM in the system, and this is running macOS 6.0.8. So yeah, it looks like I was right about the system being upgraded. Next, I wanted to take a look to see what's on the hard drive. First thing I noticed is there was a lot of personal documents, and there was a bunch of different programs like Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, Mac Paint, and a bunch of other software. Also, it looks like After Dark is on here. For those of you who don't know, After Dark is a program that adds screensavers to macOS. Also, it looks like there's a term terminal emulator on here. It would be interesting to see if I can get a dial-up modem that would work with this thing to try to use it, because I don't think I would be able to use any of my modems with this computer. This thing looks pretty good, but there's one adjustment that I want to make. The picture on the screen looks like it needs to be adjusted, so I went ahead and reopened the machine, and on the analog board there's these two little knobs to get the picture back in a nice spot. I don't think we need to do any focus control, because it looks pretty clear on the it looks pretty clear in, in real life i don't know about on camera but hey but now it's like it's the it's the full screen yes yes it's full screen now that's what i want now this thing's like perfect while I was looking about the analog board, I noticed something interesting. There's actually two revisions of the analog board, revision A and revision B. I have revision A, and apparently there was an issue with this version of the board where the fan would interfere with the video signal. I haven't really noticed anything like that, but that is definitely something I should probably look into replacing. Here's what the Rev A board looks like, and here's the Rev B. Honestly, they're pretty much the same, just the fan is different. But damn, this thing looks way better than it did before. Let's get it before and after. That is a big, big improvement. Honestly, I am super happy on how this thing turned out. But before I sign off for this video, uh, what the fuck? There has been a ton of new subscribers on the channel, and I personally want to say thank you so much for your support, and also thank you guys so much for 7k subscribers, it really means a lot to me. And it's really making my dream of making videos about cool old tech possible. But yeah, anyway, like if you like this video, dislike if you hate old Macs, or if you just hate me. I have a lot of other cool videos coming soon, so stay tuned.